Hi everyone, and thank you for joining us for this interview with Fran, who studied biological and natural sciences at Cambridge University. Fran was one of the first people to work at Snap Revise and featured a lot in the early biology videos and seminars that we did. And you can find some of those on our YouTube channel. In this video, we'll talk to her about what her time at Cambridge was like, what it was like to study biological and natural sciences, and also what she's up to now. As always, do remember to subscribe to the Snap Revise YouTube channel and ring the bell as well so that you get notified whenever we release a new video. Here's the interview with Fran. Hi Fran, thanks for joining us today. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, I'm not too bad, thank you. Um, let's start with just a bit of an intro to you. If you could give us a rundown of what you studied at A-level uh, where and what you studied at university and then what you're up to now. Yeah, so um, I'm Fran. Um, I, yeah, studied biology, chemistry, maths and German at A-level and um, then went on to University of Cambridge. I studied natural sciences, ended up specialising in biological natural sciences at uni. Um, and now I am an accountant. <laughs> um, so yeah, I work for Deloitte currently, um, as of last week, I'm officially professionally qualified now. Um, and yeah, I work in audit. Oh, so congratulations on that. Um, Thanks. <laughs> what, what, what was it about uh, the particular course that you studied at Cambridge that drew you to study it? Um, was it the, the, the specific learnings that you would do on that or was it just Cambridge in general? What, what was it that drew you to it? Um, so firstly the course is really broad so um, it's technically natural sciences and in your first year you can choose a whole bunch of modules you could do like a physics module you could do a chemistry module and a biological module um, and there are many of each to choose from um, and I think when I was at A-level I didn't really know exactly what I wanted to do yet I just knew it was science related um, so I really liked that choice and then on my open days um, I just was really impressed at obviously like Cambridge has a, a great reputation anyway but just speaking mm -hmm. to the people there um, you can just tell that they're so switched on and I just kind of wanted to be part of that environment and um, yeah you get to just chat about a lot of really interesting stuff and you really kind of drive a lot of the learning that you do so that was pretty cool. Okay and um, you talked about going to open days then did you do a lot of open days or did you have sort of Cambridge earmarked as where you wanted to go and, and that was the main place or did you see a lot of places when you were when you were choosing? Um, I did see a few places um, so I did visit Oxford as well and I think I was always like obviously aiming for Oxbridge why not shoot for the stars um, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I did uh, I went for Imperial as well and UCL um, and I think I went to open days there as well. But funnily enough, because when you go and apply to Cambridge, you have to apply to a specific college. Mm. I ended up at Corpus Christi College, which is a fantastic college. And I loved it to bits, but it actually wasn't my first choice. I, I'd gone for an open day at a different college and it was just on the way out that we saw Corpus. We decided to walk in, oh, wow. have a look around. Um, so that's how I chose that. What is the main difference between the colleges at Cambridge? Is it just the sort of locations of campuses or do they offer different programmes as well? Mm, some colleges ha like offer a different range of subjects. Mm -hmm. So, um, but that doesn't really affect the mainstream subjects. It's more stuff like architecture, um, land deck, I think is only um, offered by a few. Um, but mainly it's size and location and probably the societies within the college as well so we didn't have that many because we're such a small college mm -hmm. um but we're really central and i actually quite liked the small college vibe like okay you get to know each other really well um what's what's different about studying at university compared to a level um i guess in, in biological natural sciences what's what's the what's the step up i suppose from a level to uni like um it's big it's really big. <laughs> um, they so the kind of like underlying mantra at Oxbridge in general is that they don't want you to get to the final exam and then just like regurgitate a bunch of stuff that you've memorized. Mm. They really want you to like think on the spot, and so their learning is designed totally differently to A level. They um, basically give you an amount of 
information that was just impossible to memorize. So you've got to sit down, you've got to understand the baseline and, and the logic behind it all and use that to kind of drive your own learning. And you do have to like pick and choose the modules that you are most interested in because it's just impossible to learn at all. Mm-hmm. Um, and that kind of goes towards supervisions as well. So supervisions are totally different to school. Um, at school, you might be used to like sitting in a classroom, just having information like thrown at you, kind of it washes all over you. Um, but in supervisions, there's like two or three students. You will be one of them and you'll get like one academic and it might be like an academic fellow who specializes in a really specific part of your course, um, like a researcher, or they might be like a PhD student. Um, and you are meant in those tiny situations to drive the conversation and ask them questions um, about their specialist area, which should be relevant to your, your course. So yeah, uh, very, how, you have to be a lot yeah. more specific. How how did you go about preparing for that? Do they throw you right in the deep end, or you do you get time to sort of build up that, or, or how does it work? Is it is it from day one like that? Um, yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty <laughs> very in the deep end. <laughs> um, yeah. So you you'll obviously like have lectures as well, um, and in your lecture, I think in your first year they organise all the supervisions for you, so it's a little more structured okay um so they kind of ease you in i suppose but it's still very much like my first supervision was terrifying um Mm. i didn't really know what's happening (laughs) it's my understanding that the application process is a bit like that like the interviews are there to get a sense of how you think and stuff did you find that was your experience as well yeah exactly um it was a lot more sort of two-way than i expected like they will ask you a question that you, they, they're not expecting you to know the answer to, like they're designed to be tough. Um, and I think good interviewees will ask a question back and be like, okay, you've given me this, how about this? Or I'm thinking about these two options, does one of these work? Um, and it's actually, it, it sounds like a scary process and I think it has a reputation for being scary and weird, mm. but um, it's actually really fun and um, a lot more informal than I thought it was gonna be. And uh, outside of studying at Cambridge, what was your student life? You said your, your Corpus Christi is quite small and there wasn't a lot of societies, but what did you get up to in your, how, how many years were you there at Cambridge? Was it three or, or four? Uh, three years, yeah. Three years. So um, what, what, what else did you do when you were there when you weren't studying? Yeah, I got involved in uh, music a little bit and a bit of theatre as well. Um, so that was sort of carried over from my extracurriculars when I was at school. Um, mm-hmm. I used to play the violin. I joined an orchestra and actually got the chance to like, like it's all about connections at uni. So like you got, I got invited to replace somebody in like a really small elite chamber orchestra. I was not good enough for it, but I did it. <laughs> Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I did our like freshers play, um, at Corpus as well, which is a really good way of like getting to know people, but there is so much other stuff. Like I'm not particularly sporty, but you get into rowing. That's a really big thing there. Mm. Um, and yeah, there are always socials attached to these things as well. Um, it's quite a small town. Uh, so if you like took the uni out of it, there's like not a huge amount to do. I think Mm. there are four clubs. Um, but yeah, it was still fun. I think it depends more on the people that you're with. And um, yeah. What, what was a typical day in the life of a student when you were there? Can you give me your sort of daily routine that you would go through when you were studying there? Yeah, so uh, it changes a bit from year to year um, because you just have fewer contact hours in your last year, but it would be, I suppose, a lecture at like nine um, and then maybe like an hour in between. I might go back to my college because I was really close to my lecture um, halls. Maybe sit there, try and get my head in order and probably have breakfast because I never woke up early enough to do that. (laughs) Um, And then had like a second lecture at like 11. Um, And then I probably went straight to labs for like the afternoon. I probably finish at like five, um, grab dinner and then maybe go to supervision. Um, It was pretty full on in the first year like yeah. that would kind of be the typical day um a lot of contact time and then on top of that you kind of get given work to do you usually get a week's turnaround for essays and stuff so I'd, I'd have to find time to do that at some point as well but yeah 
Yeah, that's a, a really busy day. So, and then every week you're you're doing an essay, pretty much. Yeah. So, because you take multiple modules, it's usually more than one essay in your first year, um, and probably the same in your second year. But in my third year, I managed to get away with doing maybe one every two weeks. Oh, okay. Probably should have done more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's still still a lot of work, but still, yeah. Um, yeah. And and onto what you're doing now, it's it's slightly different from what you studied. How did you decide about um, going and, and working at Deloitte what, what took you to there yeah well I suppose Snap Revise like played a big part in that as well because I um, applied to work there like after my second year at uni um, and kind of got really interested in I suppose business in general um, and I did a bit of hunting around and speaking to people and a lot of people recommended audit as a good way to sort of jump into business because um, basically my job is to look after a certain small number of clients, make sure that their financial statements are correct and or rather true and fair at the end of the year. But what that means day to day is I get to talk to, you know, financial directors of multiple companies. Um, and I just basically get to be like, why do you do this? Um, why have you implemented this strategy and stuff like that? So um, it's a really great technical introduction to, to business and you get paid at the same time and a professional qualification. So it was mm. like, yeah, it was um, a sensible choice. And, and how did life at uni prepare you to be ready for work at Deloitte? What, what do they do then in order to make sure you're ready to work when you leave? Um, so I think at uni, you're just meant to be so self-sufficient. Um, that's another kind of big difference between school and uni. Like you really drive your own learning and I think when you get into the world of work you're kind of expected to be a self-starter as well so it really prepared me that way um and also just i know i i can feel now that i'm just so maybe dangerously good at like improvising on the spot when i'm just given a bunch of new information um i find that i know how to deal with it i don't feel overwhelmed with it i i can break it down um i really feel like cambridge taught me how to think um and yeah, um, biology, weirdly, is very closely related to business, I think. You learn about systems, you learn about how things that are interconnected actually work with each other. And I think it's really important when you look at a business in any sort of shape or form, either as an accountant or like if you want to go into consulting, if you can tear apart a really complex system, you'll do pretty well. And uh, just lastly, just to finish off, um, we just like to end the, the interviews with some tips um, that you could give GCSE or A-level students, whether that's who want to study natural sciences or just some general tips and advice for what to do in their A-levels that you found were useful. What would you, what would you highlight for you, for those students? Ooh, I would say stop making your notes pretty. <laughs> um <laughs> unless it's like a master set of notes um like don't I, I know so many of my friends wasted so much time making their notes look nice but for me it was repetition 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 um and making sure that I was thinking through notes when I was writing them so I would start with a blank piece of paper and I basically like brain dump on there and it would always be rough and disgusting to look at and there'll be diagrams everywhere but that's the process that really helps me iron things out in my head rather than just copying notes start with the mm. paper yeah maybe uh, choose only a few highlight colors to, to use instead of having yeah. every single one yeah yeah, yeah okay exactly. great well thank you for that that's pretty much everything that we we hope to get out of these interviews um so yeah i'm sure everyone will find these really useful uh, and really interesting i always do i always find it really interesting just hearing what people are doing and what they're up to now so Thank you for, for your time and uh, yeah, that's, that's great. No problem, thanks for having me. So I hope you guys found that video and interview useful and interesting. As always, you can find a lot more of us on our YouTube channel. You can see a lot more videos there, including weekly web classes that we're running on Sundays. And you can find more from us on our website, which will include bite-sized teaching videos, self-marketing quizzes, and a whole lot more and that is on www.snaprevise.co.uk.